20 most serious abandoned ships in the world. The age of vessels may have slipped into the background a little, but it is still cherished by many for several reasons. For some, it is the only means of transportation available to them. For others, it marks their social class status, and for others, it's their means of livelihood. Yet, even in that not-so-loud world of ships, mysterious disappearances happen from time to time in some waters. These missing vessels are only found after some time. After so many search operations must have fell through, and others are not even found at all. In this video, we would be showing 20 ships rumored to have disappeared, those abandoned ones, and the ones who are still unaccounted for. Get ready, viewers, to witness a roller coaster ride that will stick to memory. Here are 20 mysterious and abandoned ships in the world. Number 20. The SS Cotopaxi When the 253-foot-long SS Cotopaxi vanished in 1925, it sparked a lot of creative folklore. Different claims flying around blamed the Bermuda Triangle for the sudden disappearance of the vessel. However, 95 years later, those myths would be put to an embarrassing rest. The coal-carrying ship had 32 people on board when it suddenly disappeared. Several motion pictures, especially sci-fi films, created villains responsible for its fading. Close encounters of the third kind blamed aliens for the missing ship. The vessel was on its normal route between Charleston, South Carolina, and Havana when it sank and was washed offshore St. Augustine, Florida some years later. It took the determined efforts of marine biologist Barnett to identify the almost unrecognizable wreck of the ship, along with his diving partner. Barnett was able to debunk the myths on the disappearance of the ship after 93 years and prove that the ship was still visible and found 35 miles off St. Augustine, Florida's shore, and not in the Gobi Desert. The ship had been caught in a terrible storm on its way, which caused it to sink. Barnett was able to find some old piece of coal in the debris and found an old carpenter who helped with the construction of the ship and identified that the ship was indeed the SS Cotopaxi. The coordinates of the ship when it was found were examined and it showed that, instead of the believed Bermuda Triangle, it pointed 20 miles off the St. Augustine shore. The discovery ended many years of unsolved grief of families of the victims, in different countries worldwide. But it is quite spectacular how these boats keep ending up during the winter season at the Japan shore and the reason is not surprising. The boats are mostly old, lacking powerful modern engines and have no GPS installed in them. Hence, they get lost at sea and no one really searches for them. These fishermen typically look for sandfish, squids, and crabs. With little to no efficient equipment, they are vulnerable against violent sea winds. Number 19. The SS Airfield this large vessel is reckoned to be one of the partially surviving technologies of World War I and two eras. However, the SS Ironfield is relevant today and not just for its history, but also for its beautiful scenery. The ship grew mangroves, green, beautiful, and fresh mangroves. You want to reach out and touch it when you see it. It was built in 1911 in Scotland and served its purpose for 60 years before it was decommissioned in 1972. That was supposed to be the end of the SS Ironfield, but something happened. Decommissioned ships in Sydney, where it was commissioned one year after it was built, are sent to Homebush Bay where good ship parts are taken apart, melted, and remolded. That was supposed to happen to the SS Ironfield. However, ship metal business crashed that period so the yard was abandoned and the SS Ironfield and other ships abandoned to their fate under nature. Like expected, it rusted, sank, but just a bit. Soon enough, sprouts appeared on the destroyed ship and with years these sprouts became full and gorgeous mangroves. The 1,140-ton steel beast is now over 100 years old and continues to attract attention to itself. Tourists flock to the area to take gorgeous snapshots of the glorious vessel. Number 18. North Korean Ghost Ships Everyone knows how strict living is in North Korea. It's so stiff-necked there that the citizens, in large numbers, try to defect to neighboring South Korea and, in rare cases, Japan. The ships that make it to the Japan shore are mostly ghost ships. These small boats are filled with dead and sometimes decomposing crew members when they finally make it to shore. However, not all ships that arrive at the Japanese shore are defectors. Most of them are boats of dead North Korean fishermen who either died of starvation or unfavorable weather conditions. The dangerous occupation takes hundreds of lives in different countries worldwide. Number 17. 
the USS Fenakite PYC-25, also known as SELT SACM SP-192 Sight Steer and Circle Line 5, the USS Fenakite PYC-25 was used during World War I and World War II. It was a converted yacht built in 1902 as the yacht sailed by Pusey and Jones, Wilmington, Delaware, for J. Rogers Maxwell, who was a railroad executive. It was launched on April 12, 1902, and was used by the United States just as it made its entry into the First World War. It was acquired by the U.S. Navy on July 3, 1917. Here's a ship with an interesting and touching story. It was used as a coastal patrol yacht in the service as USS Sackham SP-192. It was then loaned to the widely respected inventor Thomas Edison, who carried out government-funded experiments. Many years after its glorious years during the World Wars, the Celt was acquired by a Cincinnati local named Robert Miller in 1986 for a meager price of 7500 It was in Miller's custody that the Celt was abandoned, after several adventurous travels, to rust and sink at Taylor Creek. It did not sink, however, but remained at the shore till this day. It is called the ghost ship by residents of the Taylor Creek, but not many of them know the beautiful story of the Celt, aka the USS Fenakite, PYC-25. Number 16. Mysterious 19th Century Shipwreck This wooden ship, built and cherished in the 19th century, made headlines in May of 2019 when researchers discovered its remains. The researchers were testing underwater drone equipment in the Gulf of Mexico when they discovered the rare site. Experts were called in to analyze the discovery, and they predicted that the vessel was built in the mid-19th century and was approximately 37.8 meters long. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, aboard the exploration vessel Okinos Explorer was responsible for the testing of the sonar on the ROV, remotely operated vehicle. The wooden ship was covered in thick molds and its copper sheathing covering the bottom of its hull was still visible. It was impossible to determine the age of the ship, when exactly it was built or when it sank. However, following a few certain findings, the shipwreck is believed to be over two centuries old. Number 15. Wooden Ship Unearthed in Philadelphia Another centuries-old shipwreck discovered in the 21st century with an interesting story. This ship is believed to have been built around 1773. It was discovered during an excavation of New York's Lower Manhattan in 2010. It is yet another Revolution-era item made of timber discovered in Philadelphia. The findings were due to the efforts of the tree ring scientists led by Edward Cook, the senior author of the study published in the July issue of the journal Tree Ring Research in 2010. The area where it was discovered, the World Trade Center, which experienced the horrendous terrorist attack events of 2001, is the famous World Trade Center. Scientists also denoted that the ship was demoted in the 1790s when it was deemed junk material. Its remnants were used to landfill the banks of the Hudson River and create more land in the growing city of New York. Number 14. Bessie White Shipwreck Uncovered in Fire Island In an unfortunate event, crew members of the Best A. White almost lost their lives if not for luck. The beautiful coal schooner left Newport News, Virginia for St. John's when she met her end. Due to fog and bad weather, Bessie pitched up a half mile west of Smith's Point at exactly 4.30 a.m. on February 6, 1922. The 200 feet long, with a displacement of 2,000 tons, was one of the last four masted coal schooners ever made. Because the Smith Point Coast Guard Station was shut down for economic reasons, and the distress calls were not visible to either the Bellport Station just four miles to the west, nor the Forge River Station four miles east. By daybreak, Bessie, who was carrying 950 tons of soft coal for gas works, had filled with at least 10 feet of water through the ground opening in her seams from the fetch up. With the gift of daylight, the crew was able to lower lifeboats into the sea and escape to shore. All of them made it out alive while one sustained mild injuries. They obtained salvage rights from the owner, Charles T. White, and sons of St. John's. Since then, Bessie has been spotted at various intervals in a space of 40 years. She was left to the sea, but she still finds the opportunity to come up once in a while, as if to say hello. Number 13. The Edmund Fitzgerald Shipwreck 
the Titanic wreckage is only lucky to be more popular than this massive ships in 1975. The Edmund was over 300 yards wide and was used to transport other smaller ships to the other companies. It had worked for eight years at an impressive rate, that her producers were super proud. However, she had met with some incidents before the year that she crashed. She had run aground in 1969, collided with SS Hoshalaga in 1970, struck the wall of a lock, and repeated the same accident in 1973 and 1974. None of them were considered serious enough. When she sank, the Edmund was carrying a full cargo of ore pellets from Superior, Wisconsin near Duluth on November 9, 1975. She was headed for a steel mill near Detroit. She joined another second Taconite fighter, SS Arthur M. Anderson, who she would have her last interactions with. They got caught in a fierce storm the next day, the storm that claimed Edmund. She sank in the Canadian Ontario waters, 530 feet, 88 fathoms, 160 meters deep, around 17 miles, 15 nautical miles, 27 kilometers, from Whitefish Bay near the twin cities of Salt State Marie, Michigan, and Salt State. All 29 crewmen perished with the beast. Where it perished is known as the Whitefish Point area, which has reportedly claimed almost 300 ships, including the Edmund. So many speculations as to what could have led to its crash surfaced, and it led to the production of several movies and even the popular ballad of Gordon Lightfoot entitled The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Its remains were first found four days later by U.S. Navy Lockheed P-3 Orion aircraft, piloted by Lieutenant George Connor. The air vehicle was equipped to deflect magnetic anomalies. The Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society GLSHS, has carried out three underwater expeditions to the wreck, 1989, 1994, and 1995. Number 12. The Costa Concordia Shipwreck This shipwreck is rather heartbreaking. Just off the coast of an Italian island, the Costa Concordia came undone in a rather shallow water. Luckily, not all the crew members were killed, but more than 30 deaths were recorded. It was fatal and totally avoidable. It was due to human error. When the captain of the ship was being interrogated on the cause of the crash, he denied the allegations that he brought to the ship so close to the island to impress his rumored fiance. He claimed that he sailed so close because he wanted to salute other mariners and give passengers a good view. His reasons were obviously ridiculous. His wrong judgment as a captain led to the loss of 32 lives and the injuring of a dozen others. The luxury cruise ship, which crashed in 2012, was a very avoidable disaster. Number 11. The SS Valencia Shipwreck This is the worst disaster in maritime history. The small ship came apart in the very dangerous graveyard of the Pacific, a part of the Pacific Ocean. The wreckage happened in 1906 when the Valencia was well over 20 years at sea. It formerly carried passengers, cargo, and troops across the ocean. Then, she was sold and used as a second-class passenger steamer, regularly taking the routes of San Francisco often to up to Seattle. This wreckage was similar to the wreckage of the Titanic and a smaller size. The Valencia struck a reef when a violent storm started. She ran aground, which caused her a large gash in her hull, after which she began to take on water as fast as possible. Since she was near shore, the captain ordered her breached, but Valencia was doomed to come to her end there. She struck the rocks again as they tried to take her to shore. She now faced merciless waves, defenseless. In panic, lifeboats were launched without orders from the captain, and this is what caused the massive death toll. The first three capsized after reaching the water, and three others flipped on descent. The last one was lost with the waves with no possible explanation. At least 136 people were reported dead, and 37 men survived. The wreck is over 120 years old, but it can still be seen floating in that dreaded area. Some wreckage is stuck in the coastline. Rumors making rounds for many years now say that there are sightings of ghost lifeboats sailing in that area and the Valencia is still sailing, fighting the storm. Number 10. The Mary Celeste Shipwreck In a very mysterious circumstance, all 10 crew members of Mary Celeste disappeared into thin air with the only lifeboat on board in 1872. The abandoned vessel was found eight days after it had sailed from New York City, heading for Genoa, Italy. The ship that discovered it was the British Brig de Gracia with Captain David Morehouse. Most of the things on the ship were still intact when David inspected it. However, he also discovered that three and a half feet of water was gushing into the ship's bottom. The ship was carrying a cargo of 1,700 barrels of industrial alcohol, and it was untouched. Out of the ship's two pumps, one was dismantled. 
Till this day, no one knows where the occupants of the Mary Celeste ended up. Several theories have tried to explain why the crew suddenly abandoned Mary, but they are all speculations with no evidence of truth in them. Several art pieces, stories, and films have emerged from the story of Mary Celeste, each showcasing their theories behind the disappearance of the crew. Number 9. The MV Captianus Shipwreck the Greek sugar-carrying ship faced a severe storm which caused her to stir while she waited for the tail of the bank to deliver the sugar company, James Watt Dock, in Greenock. She dragged her anchor as she sailed due to the wind. She was steered and finally drifted onto the taut anchor chains of a nearby BP tanker, British Light. Her bottom was struck by the anchor below the waterline. Water began to rush in and the Captianus was preparing to sink. However, the captain ordered to beach her in the shallow waters over the desired spot and stuck her there, where she is up to this day. With assistance from other boats, the goods and crew members on board were rescued. The vessel fell on her side and she lay there until this day, and her rusting metal has become a home to birds and other wildlife since 40 years ago when it sank in 1974. Number 8. L.A. Famille Express Shipwreck First known as the Fort Shevenko, when it served the Soviet Navy for a very large part of its life, La Famille was sold off in 1999 and renamed. In 2004, after 52 years of faithful service, La Famille wrecked under reportedly suspicious circumstances. The Famille had had a rough life from 1953. It was initially an oil rig service ship. It was given the duty of transferring supplies to remote offshore oil wells. It continued this tough life until it was decommissioned in 1999, 47 years after it seemed like the Soviet Union. Now, despite its poor condition, the ship became the La Famille Express bearing the Panama flag. It now served as a freighter ship sending or transporting bulk rock. The ship became rooted to its present location after Hurricane Francis in 2004. It lies in a few feet in the water. The site has now become a major tourist attraction in the country. Number 7. The Demetrio Shipwreck The mysterious ship was docked at Gaitio for a long time until June 1981. Then she was declared unsafe due to wear on the docking ropes and starboard list due to water entering her hull. She was temporarily anchored after waters from a terrible storm swept about, but it happened again so the ship was swept away to its current location today. There are many speculations on how the abandoned ship arrived at its current location. However, official accounts of the ship's whereabouts since 1981 were obtained from a book. The book, Shipwrecks of the Greek Seas, is written by Vice Admiral Christos Natunis, Honorary Chief of the Hellenic Coast Guard. The now rusted ship stands upright, laughed by the waves, it remains as it arrived more than 30 years ago. Number 6. The Joyita Shipwreck the famous Mary Celeste of the South Pacific. It sailed for its last voyage on October 3, 1955, from the Samoa's Apia Harbor, bound heading towards the Tokelau Islands, about 270 miles away. However, like the Mary Celeste, the Joyita never got to its destination. When the call from Fakaufo port reported that the ship was yet to arrive, search operations were launched to find the boat. For six days, they searched and did not find her. Two weeks later, however, another ship headed towards another direction spotted the Joyita lifting heavily. It was over 600 miles west from her scheduled destination, drifting north of Vanua Levu. When the captain of the new ship inspected her, she was abandoned. All of the crew had disappeared. She had suffered serious damages and evidence that the crew had tried to make a distress call was found. However, it was also discovered that the driver had admitted paying customers. The three life rafters disappeared along with all 26 crew members. They've not been found up till this day. Not even their bodies were recovered. Number 5. The Edward Boland Shipwreck in the history of shipwrecks, no one is deliberately unaware of the scary piece of parched desert land called the Skeleton Coast. This place has claimed more lives than can be imagined. Sailors have lost their ships to desert dune ripples from this place towards the Atlantic Ocean. A thick, heavy fog rises from emanates from the place on almost every morning. The same date as those lost ships awaited the Edward when it sailed out in September 1909. It first ran aground under the thick fog under Namibia's skeleton coast. 
The ship, which was headed for Table Bay from Swakopmund when it ran into the fog that blinded it. The 310-foot-long vessel ship is now partially buried underneath sand. The ship remains stranded in the middle of the desert further and further away from shore, and it continues to stand. It has now become a haven for jackals who want to rest from the hot sun. After it got stuck, the desert has expanded to more than 1,000 feet into the ocean so that the wreck is stuck. Around it, other wrecks that met the same fate as it are littered around it. Some wrecks are stuck close to the water, their hull stuck in the sand. Others have been thoroughly battered so that only their parts, wood and metal, lying about the water and some pieces sticking out of the sand. Number 4. Ghost Ship in Myanmar the Sam Ratulangi PB-1600 was spotted by Myanmar fishermen off the country's commercial capital shore. It was drifting close to the Yangon region. They attempted to tow the empty ship by a tugboat, but they ran into bad weather. This sparked rumors that the ship was possessed by ghosts. It ran aground on a beach before authorized personnel examined the ship and noted that there were no major damages to it. It was in good shape. They wondered how it ended up in their waters with no trace of its roots. The Ratulangi was built in 2001, and its last known movement was recorded off the coast of Taiwan in 2009. This was around the time that the abandoned ship was first sighted in Myanmar waters. The 177-meter-long vessel was probably being towed by another ship when it was found since two cables were found in its head. Their suspicions were confirmed when a tugboat was found 50 miles off the Myanmar coast. The vessel was on its way to a factory in Bangladesh where it would be dismantled and useful parts salvaged from the ship. More attacks from bad weather made the investigators finally abandon the ship. Number 3. The SS Urang Madan The scariest of all nautical stories is this one, where the ship's existence is not even confirmed. Records on the event are not similar but majority claim that it happened in the 1940s. The vessel was sailing through the Strait of Malacca when the tragedy happened. Nearby ships reported getting strange distress calls about all the crew being dead and the caller dying after calling. A ship approached it and examined the Edward in a very horrifying sight and they all looked towards the sky in utter shock and fear. Their teeth was bare. While they tried to put two and two together before they can investigate further, the ship starts burning. They quickly evacuated it, and just as the last person left the ship, it exploded into the air and disappeared into the sea. Up till this day, the Oorong has never been seen. However, something stranger happened. While trying to investigate the missing vessel, authorities found that there was no record of the Oorong. A German researcher, Professor Theodor Searsdorfer, investigated the mysterious case for around half a century, and he discovered an old German publication from 1953 entitled Das Totenschiffen der Susdi, or The Death Ship Found in the South Seas. In that book, he found some facts about the vessel and was able to draw some conclusions from it. The ship was actually registered in Sumatra. This confirms the fact that the ship actually existed. It was also concluded that the ship must have exploded due to the chemicals present on the ship. Scientists believe that the crew either died from the release of dangerous gases or they were attacked by pirates. Number 2 perfectly preserved shipwreck found in Lake Superior. Late in the night in May 1884, crewmen from a 130-foot-long cargo ship called the J.S. Severns unloaded food and supplies at the tiny port of Michipicotin. The port, northeast of the coast of Lake Superior, was the designated location for the goods and supplies of the Canadian Pacific Railway. The men got back on the ship and sailed away, but not for long. Upon leaving that port, the ship struck a rock which created a big hole inside her. Then the fate of the ship was sealed. It began to sink. Fortunately, all 15 crew members and 45 passengers made it out alive. The ship vanished. However, another team found the vessel looking all intact in the same year at the bottom of the lake. The researcher who found the wreck, Fountain, took so many years to confirm that the wreck was indeed the J.S. Severns. They inspired the device using the sonar device. Divers who found the wreck said the ship sank smoothly under calm weather. The flooding was the only reason it sank, and no storm was to blame. This explains why the ship remained intact when it was found. Number 1. The SS Richard Montgomery This shipwreck is the deadliest and yet without any fatalities. Weird, huh? The U.S. Liberty ship was loaded with 7,000 tons of munitions, which it was to deliver to the U.K. and then on to the Cherbourg in 1944. It was to co-sail with convoy HX-301. 
They successfully made smooth sail to the Thames estuary where things turned for the worse that no one would ever imagine. The 7,146 gross ton ship was built in 1943 by St. John's River Shipbuilding Company of Jacksonville. It was in perfect condition when it left for the UK. It was during the time of war that these ugly incidents happened. Thousands of ships like the Montgomery were created to convey important arms and goods. When Montgomery arrived in the Thames estuary and was directed to the pastor aboard the vessel, the massive ship carries the anchor with her across from the channel. She runs aground on a sandbank and eventually splits in two before it was completely flooded. Rescue operatives were able to bring down the 7,000 munitions to just 1,400. Yet, even that number is frightening. There have been attempts go evacuate the ship from the area as it imposes a lot of danger, but all have fell through. Among these shipwrecks and the story behind them, which we have discussed here, which one catches your fancy the most? Which one would you not mind experiencing by yourself if teleportation happens to exist? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.